Welcome back guys, hope you guys are having a great day as always. Today we're going to be talking about Kosa Raju's algorithm, which is used to find strongly connected components. So to understand this lesson, you're going to have to know depth first search and stacks. And I do have a video on that if you do want to check it out. Let's begin by talking about what strongly connected components are. They're basically a subset of the graph where all the nodes are reachable within each other. This is an example of a strongly connected component because from A, you can get to any other node by traveling through this. So as long as there's a path from one node to another in this subset, it's a strongly connected component. So from A, you can reach B, from B, you can reach D, from D, you can reach C, and from C, you can reach A. This means that if you use any of these paths, you can get to either one of them. With this example though, you can see that although these are strongly connected, D cannot reach E, even though E can reach D. And because of that, A can't reach E either, neither can C or B. So this is not a strongly connected component. But if we broke this down even more into this and this, these two separately are strongly connected components. Here's another example. So whenever you see a cycle, that's an indication of a strongly connected component. So over here, you have your own strongly connected component. And this is another one over here. Now, even though B can reach E, E has no way of reaching B or any of the other nodes here. If it could, then this entire thing would be a strongly connected component. So for example, if I had a node going from E to D, every node that can reach E can also reach D. And if it can reach D, it can reach every single node in this strongly connected component. Now to identify these strongly connected components, you need to understand what a transpose is. So a transpose of a graph is basically a duplicate of the graph with all the edges reversed. So if A goes to B and B goes to C, in the transpose version, we're going to have B goes to A and C goes to B. You'll notice that in the first graph, A can reach B, but B can't reach A. But in the transpose, B can reach A and A cannot reach B. Now let's look at strongly connected components. We see that A can reach C, C can reach B, B can reach A, so they can all reach each other. With the transpose, you can see that they also can reach one another because it's just the reverse cycle. So this shows that even when you reverse a graph, strongly connected components are preserved. That's the basis of this algorithm. We look at the graph and the transpose of it, and we keep track of what is reachable by what. If nodes are reachable within the transpose and itself, that means it's a strongly connected component. So to do this, we're gonna run depth first search on the original graph. And then after we're gonna transpose the graph and we're gonna run depth first search again on it. When we depth first search the original, the order doesn't matter. We can start from B, we can start from A, we can start from C, but the order is important when you're looking at the transpose and you'll see why. Let's actually look at an example of the algorithm to see how it actually identifies these strongly connected components. So just by looking at it, you know that it's a strongly connected component. Let's see how the algorithm identifies that. We can choose any node to start with. Let's start with B, for example. So first we visit B, we add B to visit it. Now we're gonna look at B's unvisited neighbors. So next we have C, so we add C to visit it and we look at its neighbors. Likewise, we do the same thing with D, we add D, and then we look at D's unvisited neighbors, which is A, and A only has one neighbor, which is B, and B is already visited, so we can stop there. So now we have this path over here, and we're just gonna add everything to the stack now, starting from A. So we add A, then we add D, then we add C, then we add B. So now let's transpose the graph and start over. In that first iteration of depth research, we didn't really care about the order, but now the order matters. So what we're gonna use is the stack. So we pop from the top of the stack and then we run depth first search on it. So we start off with B, B gets visited. So then we look at A, A is not visited. So we visit it and we look at its neighbors. Then we look at D and then we look at C. C's only neighbor is B, but B is already visited. So we can stop there. So since A, D and C are all visited, we don't have to run depth first search on it anymore. And when our stack is empty, we can actually stop. So we were able to pop these four elements with just one traversal of B, which means that it's one strongly connected component. Now let's look at a more complex example. We have one strongly connected component here, we have one here, and we have one here. Like before, order doesn't matter. We can start off with D, for example. So let's start off with D. We add D to visit it, and then we visit D's neighbors. So B and E. Order doesn't really matter here. Let's just go with B for now. It is depth first search. We're gonna keep going that way. So we're gonna hit C next. Let's add C to visit it and visit C's neighbors. Then we add A. A's only neighbor is B, which is already visited. So we can stop there. So with that one iteration of DFS, our last node was A. So we're gonna add everything to the stack in this order. So we have A, C, B, and D. So now all of these are visited. Now we have to visit this. Let's look at E. So first we add E, we add all of E's neighbors, which is just F in this case. We add F, F's only neighbor is D, but D is already visited like from before. 
so we can stop there. So with that one iteration, we got E and F. And just like before, we add them in this order. So first we add F, then we add E. Finally, we visit all of these nodes. We have one more DFS left, which is for H. So let's do that. We add H and then we look at all its neighbors. E and F are both visited, so we can stop there. So in that one iteration, we only got H. So we're just gonna add H to the stack. So now let's reset visited and transpose the graph. Now let's use the stack again and we'll run DFS on it. We take H first. You can't reach any other node from H. H has no more neighbors. So because of that, we stop. They can't reach any other nodes. So because of that, that's its own strongly connected component. So let's write that one down here and we can pop it from the stack. Next, we look at E and we run depth for search on E. So we visit E first. E can only visit D. So we visit D. D can only visit F. So we visit F. F can reach E and H, but they're both visited, so we stop there. So with that single iteration of DFS on E, we were able to get all three of these. So that's its own strongly connected component and we can pop them from the stack. Next, we check B. Let's run DFS on B. B can visit D and A. D is already visited, so we're gonna visit A now. So we add B to visited and then we visit A. We add A to visited. A can only visit C, so we visit C next. C can only visit B, but B is already visited, so we stop there. Now with that one iteration of DFS starting from B, we were able to get A and C. So that's its own strongly connected component and we can pop them from the stack. So now that the stack is empty, we can stop and we can return these strongly connected components as wanted. You can play around with your own examples. I'm sure it'll work every single time. So that's how the algorithm works. We run depth for a search, we reverse it, and then we run depth for a search in a particular order and you get all your strongly connected components. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, thank you for a thousand subs. I'm extremely grateful for each and every one of you and I'm glad you guys are liking my videos. Please let me know in the comment section if there's any other video you want me to make or if you have any questions. I'll have pseudocode and a visualization tool in the description below. Bye.